everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna to solve some exponential equations and there are two methods we use to solve these. First method, use exponent rules to get the same base and that's what we're gonna do in this video. There is a second method and this is probably the more common method is to use logarithms and that will be in the following video. Once I put it up, I'll put the link right up here. So if you're looking for that, click up here. Otherwise, stay tuned. And it's good to know both these methods because we could be given something like this uh, on an exam or a quiz and be told solve the following exponential equations and don't use any logarithms. And so hopefully you'll know how to do that when that comes up. And if you watch this video, then you'll be good. So let's go ahead and start. This is a good example. Seven to the X equals seven to the third. Clearly X equals three. You could probably see that just by looking at it. So this is actually, we can write a general rule from this, okay? If we have some number to some power equal to that same number to some power, then those powers must be equal. Look at this example. Two to the two x squared power equals two to the x. If this is true, then that means two x squared must equal x. And that's how we can solve for x in this case, is two x squared equals x and solve for x by basically solving this equation for x, right? So can we write a general rule? Well, if we have something like this, some base to some power equals that same base to some power, right? If this is true, then what's true? Well, x must equal y. And this is the general rule we use to solve these exponential equations without using logarithms. So the tricky part is the bases have to be the same, and we'll see more examples where the bases aren't the same, but we can manipulate them to be the same, right? So at first, let's finish off this example, okay? We can subtract x over and set zero to one side and factor. That's how I would personally solve this. So I'm left with 2x squared. I'm subtracting x over minus x, right? And setting it to zero. Anytime I see an x squared, this is usually the method I'm gonna use. I'm gonna factor, because there's gonna be more than one solution, right? I can factor out an x. I'm left with 2x minus one times x equals zero. So that means x equals zero. That's one of my solutions for x. Another solution is 2x minus one equals zero. So I can rewrite that down here. 2x minus one equals zero. I can add 1 to both sides. I get 2x equals 1. And now I can simply divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 1 half. So what these means is these are the solutions, right? These are the values for x that when I substitute these back in for x, I get true equations for both of these. Think about it. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 2 times 0 squared, that's 1 as well, right? 0 squared is 0 times 2, that's 0. 1 equals 1, that is a true statement. And the same goes for the 1 half. I get 2 to the 1 half power. And then I get 1 half squared up here, which is 1 fourth, times 2, which is 1 half. So I get 2 to the 1 half equals 2 to the 1 half. These are both true statements. So that's how the, this works. It doesn't matter if x is down here or if it's up here in, as an exponent, we're still solving for those values for x that make this a true equation. So let's go ahead and continue with some more examples. All right, so we're gonna solve this exponential equation. I encourage you to pause the video, try it on your own, press play if you wanna check your answer or if you get stuck. So again, for this rule to work, we need the bases to be the same. So we need to do some manipulation to make these bases the same. And we're gonna use our exponent rules. So I can rewrite eight as what? Let's see, I could try to rewrite it as four to some power, but that wouldn't work, right? Because we have four squared, but that's 16. But I can rewrite it as two cubed, right? And I can rewrite this as two squared, and then I have the same base. So that's the pattern you're gonna notice, is you're gonna see uh, bases in common, usually between these numbers, and you can rewrite these as that common base to some power, and then you have the same base. That's pretty much how all these problems work. So I can rewrite four as two squared because those are the same thing, and if I do this, I can have the same base, and I can solve these without using logarithms. So two cubed, that's what eight equals, right? Two cubed is eight, x plus three. So now I need to be real, real careful, right? Because I still technically have four here as the base and eight, I need to get this two by itself so I can use my exponent rules where I have a power to a power and that means I multiply, but I have to multiply the two to everything, to two x and to negative one. So that's the most common mistake. So make sure you multiply through with this three, it becomes three x plus nine, right? So I'll start over here on the left. I have two to the four x minus two, because that two gets multiplied to both those terms. It's two times everything up there, right? And you could even put parentheses around if that helps. 
put some parentheses if that helps you, equals what? 2 to the 4x minus 2 equals 2 to the 3x plus 9, right? So now I have what I need. I have the same base on both sides, each raised to some power. So I can say that these powers are equal to each other and I can solve for x. And in this case, I actually just have one solution for x because there is no x squared terms. This is a linear equation at this point. So I can add 2 to both sides and I can subtract 3x from both sides. I'll do both these steps at once. I feel like y'all can, can handle two steps at once. I believe in y'all. So 3x minus 3x, that's gone. Minus 2 plus 2, that's gone. So now I have 4x minus 3x, that's just x, which equals 9 plus 2, that is 11. So this is my solution for x to this exponential equation. All right, go ahead and press pause and try this on your own. Press play if you want to check your answer. It's getting a little trickier. This is the last example. Because in this case, we have three expressions, right? So in order to use our rule, we need to make all these three things the same base. Because if these can be the same base, then we can actually combine these, right? We have an exponent rule that tells us we can do that. And then if I have one thing with the same base equals another thing with the same base, and then I can say those exponents equal each other and I can solve for x, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Let's see what we can re rewrite this as. Well, I'm noticing a three in common. Since I already have a three here, nine is just three squared and 27 is three cubed. So I'm gonna rewrite all of these with the base three. So I have three squared here to the two x power times three cubed to the x squared power equals three to the negative one. So this is the slightly tricky part. You just have to remember your exponent rules. You're gonna multiply this through two times two x equals what? Four x, so that's three to the four x power times three to the three times x squared, that's three x squared power equals three to the negative one. Okay, I lied, that last part wasn't the tricky part. This is the tricky part, because now we have to remember our exponent rules when we multiply two things with the same base, what happens? We add the exponents, right? Think of something like x squared times x cubed. We'd write that as x to the fifth, right? We add the exponents, three plus two. So in this case, we're adding the exponents and we can combine these. I'm gonna rewrite it up here. Three to the four x plus 3x squared. And the reason we do this is because we want to get one thing on each side with the base so we can set these equal to each other, right? Because now I have all this equals 3 to the negative 1. That means everything up here must equal negative 1 in order for this to be true, right? So since this is true, we know that this stuff in the exponent here equals this exponent here, and therefore we can rewrite this as 4x plus 3x squared equals negative 1. Now, since this is a quadratic, I'm going to pull this negative 1 over to this left side. I'm going to factor and solve for x. 3x squared plus 4x. Since I added 1 to both sides, right, plus 1 plus 1, I have plus 1 equals 0. Now I can factor this trinomial. So 3, I know that that's prime. So the only way to get 3 in that first term is to have 3x times x. That's the only way to get it. Same with one, the only way to get one is one times one, so I know I have ones here. So now I just need to figure out is this plus plus or minus minus, because my one is positive, so it has to be either plus plus or minus minus. In this case, I'm gonna guess that it's plus because I have plus four x, but I can double check my answer here. I kinda just used a guess and check method to factor this, but three x squared plus three x plus x, that gets me back to the plus four x. So this is indeed correct, and now I just set each one of these binomials equal to zero. I'm going to do that over here. I'm running out of room. Sorry about that. X plus one equals zero. Subtract one from both sides. That means X equals negative one. This is one of my solutions for X. Second solution, I have three X plus one equals zero. That means that three X equals negative one. I can divide by three both sides and I have X equals negative one third. So these are my two solutions for x. x equals negative one and x equals negative one third. So hopefully this video helps. Stay tuned. We're going to solve these using logarithms in the next video. But if you enjoyed, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and keep flexing those brain muscles.